In this video, we'll uh, begin looking at time-dependent perturbation theory, which was developed by Dirac around 1926 uh, by first motivating the need for uh, taking into account the time dependence of a perturbation. And then uh, by setting up how we're going to consider the problem uh, to be able to develop uh, a solution for it. So the idea behind needing a time dependent perturbation theory is that any perturbation to a system has to have been turned on, so to speak, at some point in time. What this means is uh, the framework for time independent perturbations are really just an approximation when the response of a system to that perturbation is so fast, which means that once the system responds, it quickly stabilizes to uh, constant behavior. Uh, that response is so quick that we can ignore any time dependence. Moreover, uh, this assumes that once the perturbation is turned on, it remained uh, constant for, uh, for the remaining period of time. This isn't always the case. Oftentimes the perturbation itself depends on time. For example, if you look at uh, shining light on, on an atom, you have an electromagnetic wave that varies with space and time that we uh, have to take into account. So all that to say that a uh, more general way to frame uh, perturbation theory is to say that uh, we need a time dependent Hamiltonian, which we'll write as uh, a time independent portion. And to this, we'll add a small perturbation delta H, which depends on time. Uh, we'll assume that we can solve the time independent Schrodinger equation for uh, H hat naught. So what that means is uh, we can solve for the stationary states, uh, which we'll write like this, of this first time independent part of the Hamiltonian. So these are our, our usual stationary states. Uh, each one of which has an energy En. Notice here that I'm not writing a superscript uh, zero like we did for time independent perturbation theory because it will turn out that uh, time dependent perturbation theory doesn't perturb the states or the energy. Uh, we're going to eventually do a perturbation expansion of a different quantity. Okay, so this means the, uh, the time independent Schrodinger equation can be solved for uh, this first term in our Hamiltonian. All right, uh, so the way we're going to frame this problem is if you look at the evolution in time of an experiment, uh, up until some time t naught, the system we're considering can be completely described by a time independent Hamiltonian, uh, which we're denoting by h hat naught. At some time t naught, we turn on a time dependent perturbation. Uh, so now our full Hamiltonian is uh, written out with this extra time dependent perturbation up until some time tf, at which point the perturbation is turned back off and the system goes back to being fully described by a time independent Hamiltonian. And what we would like to do 
is we would like to find uh, how the state of the system, which I'll write actually as a capital Psi, in space and time uh, evolves uh, under this scenario. And this is of course subject to uh, an initial condition, I see. Uh, at the point where we turn on the time dependent perturbation. All right, so to put this another way, what we're ultimately interested in is to solve the full Schrodinger equation. For the state of our quantum system. So now we have uh, the time dependent Schrodinger equation. Our time dependent Hamiltonian and the state of our system as a function of time. Okay, so this is ultimately our goal. Uh, the difficulty in, in doing this is that uh, we can no longer uncouple the position and time components of the wave function like we did for time independent problems. Okay, so our first challenge, which was uh, a big aid when we we're considering time independent problems, is that our general uh, wave function can no longer be written as a position component and a time component. What this also means is uh, stationary states are no longer eigenstates of the Hamiltonian uh, because um, energy is no longer conserved for a time dependent system. Uh, to put this a different way, uh, the state of a quantum system will no longer have a definite energy throughout time, that energy may change uh, by, by the perturbation. Okay, so that's not to say that um, states of definite energy no longer exist. Uh, it just means that we're interested more in the dynamics of a system, for example, if we're looking at an atom, we're interested in the transition between uh, two energy levels. Okay, so that's uh, the context that we're going to be developing time dependent perturbation theory in. Okay, so we're interested in estimating transition probabilities between states of a quantum system. Right. More specifically, uh, to frame this a bit more mathematically, we would like to know if at time t zero, the state of our quantum system was given by ket i. We're interested in finding the probability that at some later time t, uh, our our system is in a different state given by cat F. Okay, 
Yeah, okay, so this is the, the first problem that we'll consider. Uh, the complication again is that we're introducing dynamics into the picture. We've never looked at um, the time evolution uh, of transitions between different states. Okay. And the key to doing this is going to be in the fact that uh, the uh, stationary states of our system, cat n, they still form a complete and orthonormal basis, which means that we can express any function whatsoever as a linear combination of them. Uh, by playing around with that uh, tool, we're going to be able to develop uh, a perturbative series expansion that will allow us to answer this question. All right, and uh, we'll begin looking at that in the next video.